Peter Delapena here with USA coach James Pammon, head of the ODI Tri-Series here starting tomorrow at Sharjah Cricket Stadium. You guys taking on the UAE. You had a practice match against Scotland uh, yesterday and you guys lost, but obviously in practice matches you're trying to do different things. What is the overall uh, assessment of, of how you thought guys fared, especially coming into, again, a new environment, f fresh conditions straight out of Trinidad? Yeah, it was a, a really worthwhile exercise. I think, you know, we've obviously had a, a number of competitive games uh, over in the West Indies Super 50, so, you know, we, we don't really want to be consistently in the nets training, so it was a great opportunity after a day uh, of arrival, and we trained, obviously, at the ICC Academy the day before, so it was nice to get out and, and play a game. Uh, it was nice to obviously have a look at Scotland in a, in a competitive environment as well and, and check out one or two of their players and, and the things that they like to do. So, yeah, it was a good shakeout. You know, I think a number of our guys have obviously still still been uh, struggling for a night's sleep. So, you know, we were a little bit fatigued, but uh, there were some encouraging signs came out of the day that uh, hopefully will stand us in good stead as we prepare to uh, play our first game tomorrow. I know it might sound silly for some people listening, uh, but I've experienced it myself coming here on the various trips, it, uh, and it usually does take a few days to come off. I always try and come here at least a day or two before yeah. with the jet lag, and you guys ha have been here for now three days, but uh, on a serious note, how much of an issue is it trying to adjust because um, a lot of the flights land here in the middle of the night, and these guys are thrown off getting up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., uh, and then trying to just getting ready for a, for a match scenario just a couple days later, how much of a challenge has that been? Yeah, well, we, we wanted to try and make sure in our planning phase that we were here at least four nights before our first game. So that was the key to try and have four nights in this environment. So tonight will be the fourth night that we've slept in Dubai, and hopefully guys will be fresh and ready to go tomorrow. Certainly leading into the practice game yesterday, most guys said they'd been up since three o'clock. And you could sort of see that as the day wore on, that guys were, were very fatigued. But, you know, it's, it's a tough job journey from, uh, it's from Trinidad. Uh, it's a, I think it, we, were, we were 40 hours in transit, but hey, you know, we're very fortunate to be involved in the sport that we love, so you know, a few nights of un, unconsistent sleep, but it's by the by really. You know, we're here to play cricket, and by tomorrow we'll be good to go, so I think we've managed the transition in the planning phase reasonably well, and, and we won't feel tomorrow that we're, uh, we're underdone. One of the guys who really struggled for form in Trinidad, Aaron Jones, started to come around on the, the last two matches in that tour, scored 37 on both occasions, and then 44 joint top score in the warm-up match. What are the signs that you've seen from him, whether it was here or, or in those last couple of days in uh, Trinidad, that are giving you the confidence and encouragement that he will get back to the form he showed for the majority of 2019? Yeah, I think it, you know that's, that's batting, really. Sometimes you're out of form and you need to go back to the nets to work hard to rediscover what that form is that you're searching for and sometimes you're just out of runs. Sometimes you're playing well and you're out of runs and I think Aaron was definitely out of form. Uh, you know, he wasn't bringing too much, I guess, positivity to how he was playing. He was almost looking to survive. So the last couple of games, it's actually nice to see him taking the initiative and going about his business of scoring runs rather than just surviving and trying to uh, take what comes on his offer. So, yeah, he, he looks to me like he's, he's back in the form that we saw, I saw in, in PNG, against PNG in uh, Florida. Obviously didn't see his significant performances previously because I wasn't involved, but certainly, you know, the signs from people who were involved are saying that uh, Aaron's striking the ball cleanly now like he was back then. So it's encouraging for the team because, you know, we do need a top five that can score decent scores. And even yesterday, 40 was nice, but nice is not going to win as many games when we get competitive. So he needs to be hungry to score more. Ian Holland's role is something that I think a lot of people are going to be curious about for this series because he was kind of trialed in a few different places, had that fantastic uh, 59 not out in the last match, which um, I thought was the innings of, of the tour, um, even though it was not as high as the scores that Xavier and, and Monon cut, I thought in yeah. the situation it was incredible. And then in the trial match he had against the academy side he went back up to open scored a half century there uh, was opening uh, you know at, at, in another match in, in the super 50 so he's he's 
been in a few situations where he's shown uh, adaptability yeah. with the bat in particular, aside from what he does with the ball. Where realistically is, is he going to fit into the plans in this yeah, tri series? He's, he's a multifaceted cricketer and he's very flexible. So, you know, we didn't have Xavier with us for that trial match that we played against the Trinidad under 23s, I think it was. So, Xavier was back in New York uh, attending to some personal business. So, Ian went up. So, if one of our openers that we've identified gets injured, then Ian's likely to fill that role. But through this tournament, hopefully, the openers play well and they stay fit, and, and Ian can carry out that role at number five where we think it best suits our group uh, at the moment. But that might change and he's intelligent enough to be able to adapt and adjust and, uh, and accept that responsibility that we give him. Yeah, the other key selection point is that there's a surplus of pace bowling options in this touring squad when you think about frontline options like Saurabh, Rusty Tehran, Cameron Stevenson, Ian Holland, and then also Elmar Hutchinson is is there in the mix. Um, in, a, in a country where traditionally uh, it's it's spin friendly or slow slow bowling friendly conditions, uh, how much of a of a challenge is it going to be to try and uh, come up with a best eleven, taking into context the options that are at your disposal? Yeah, it's, it's nice to have options, and obviously we've got a number of batsmen or all rounders that form both skills. So number of our batsmen are, are reasonably good spin bowlers as well so we've got that flexibility uh, and we've got those four frontline seamers you know we we see in in a very specific role you know uh, I wouldn't class him as a frontline seamer but certainly he's got a role to play there at certain stages of the innings uh, but we do need that cover yeah I would actually like to have a little bit more cover in that area uh, in the squad because you know, you, you say that about traditionally a country that favours spin, but yet historically when USA have been here, you know, it has always, hasn't always been the case. So, you know, it's nice to have the balance and it's nice to have, I guess, a number of options that we can take once we see conditions and, and obviously we see how opposition are likely to play. But it suits our game plan to, to have those options across the board. Scotland finished basically just behind... The Netherlands in the previous edition of, of what is now this League Two competition, and they've gotten off to quite a good start early on. Uh, UAE's had some struggles uh, off the field with uh, anti-corruption that have been well publicized, and that's depleted their squad. Um, so, getting a chance to see what you got to see out of Scotland and, and knowing the the selection issues that UAE are currently having. What is the outlook that you have in terms of w realistically what you think you could achieve on this tour? Yeah, well, it's hard to make predictions, you know, before you've you've bowled a ball or hit one in, in anger. But you know, we, we're ambitious. Uh, we feel we've been very good, been given very good preparation in terms of the time that was spent together. Perhaps the conditions were a little bit different to what we're going to experience here, but the time together and the communication, the discussions that we've had, have all been based around how we're going to be competitive uh, over this next 10 days. So. Yeah, I mean, Scotland, are, I guess they've progressed their cricket to the point where they've played a number of competitive fixtures over the last few years, and they've got a, a core group that seems to have been together for a while, and, and they looked they looked very, very good unit yesterday, you know, the bowlers looked like they knew what they were doing, the batsmen all bring solid game plans, and, and they've got good options across the board, so they're, they're going to be a tough nut to crack, but, you know, that's that's why we're involved in this sport, to, uh, to try and strive to beat you know teams that I guess that are ranked higher than us so that we can start you know making progress up the ladder. Uh, UAE while I haven't delved too much into their, their corruption issues and, and their I guess issues that they're having internally I know that they'll put a, a, a strong 11 out that's playing in their own backyard and I'm sure that they'll be they'll be passionate to do well. We've, we've obviously scouted their squad and, and we've seen that they've got some strengths and we've seen that they've got some weaknesses where we can target so tomorrow morning first thing we'll be looking to expose those weaknesses to the best of our ability whether we get to bat first or whether we get to bowl first. So, you know, we, we've come together nicely and, uh, and hopefully, like I said, everybody gets another good night's sleep tonight and they feel fresh in the morning that we can go and get as close as we can to our performance plans that we've been talking about now since we were in Florida. Anything else you want to say about this series? 
Oh, it's just an exciting for these this bunch of cricketers that uh, very rarely get you know the opportunity to come and play, and in a competitive competitive environment, it's just an exciting time for them. And I know that they're all really looking forward to representing the USA with pride and and trying their best to put some wins on the board for the supporters back home who've been great with the, their well wishes and the support that we've received.